Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to TCS's The Big Questions, where I, Adam Spencer, ask big, interesting, and hopefully inspirational questions, well, the answers are certainly that, of fascinating people from around the globe, in particular focusing in this series on sustainability in its broadest sense. And my guest today joins us from New Zealand, a country that sources over 80% of its power from renewable sources. And where to start with my guest today? Well, as well as being the founder and CEO of New Zealand's Tech Futures Lab and the Mind Lab, in 2018, she was appointed a companion to the New Zealand Order of Merit, recognising her lifetime contribution in education and technology. In 2017, she received the Flying Kiwi Award. She's been inducted into New Zealand's High Tech Hall of Fame, named one of the top three New Zealand Innovators of the Year in the New Zealand of the Year Award, etc. She's won the Sir Peter Blake Leader Award, dot, 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 dot. Reading her CV, Reminds me of that great Australian saying, pull your head in, pal. No one likes an overachiever. Frances <laughs> Valentine, welcome to TCS's The Big Questions. How are you? I am great, and thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the same applies in New Zealand, the, the same pull your head in. So, yeah. <laughs> We're talking in this series about sustainability in its broadest possible sense. How do you personally define sustainability, Frances? I think it's, it changes over time, um, and it depends on context and, and, and actually what some of the things that are going on around me. But then fundamentally, I think of sustainability is acting in a way that means that you are benefiting the environment around you. It, it's not detrimental, that you're, you're improving things over time, and you're enabling others to do the same. It is a fascinating time, isn't it? Because we are, in some ways, looking to the old, looking to the traditional, looking to the long-known in a time of greater technological change and more new than we've ever had before. What role do you think digital technology and digitization plays in the whole digital sustainability piece? Well, first of all, it gives you information. So without data, you, there's a lot of guesswork. So, you know, everything we now have, we can do predictive analytics, whether it be a machine learning algorithm or using artificial intelligence. You know, we can start predicting what will happen if we if we continue in one trajectory? If we're going to reduce our sorry our carbon footprint, we desperately need to have the data to tell us how we're doing. You know we can't just wait for a few years to pass and check in again and go, are we doing okay? So I think the most important one around digital is we have the ability to put the sensors in place to gather the data to interpret to give us a pathway forward. And you know I think technology because it's been democratised and it's becoming more and more affordable, we're starting to see the sort of reverse of exponential growth. We're seeing the ability for types of technology like solar that are decreasing in cost all the time, so the uptake can increase, so that you can see the impact when a larger number of organisations or countries take on a particular more renewable source of energy, then actually you can actually see the benefit really quickly. But again, the data is really what you need. Francis Valentine is the founder of the Tech Futures Lab and the Mind Lab. In those capacities, you've advised companies everywhere from agriculture to finance, retail to law, water and other utilities. Give an example of a sector that you look at and think, wow, if, if, this, if this sector adopted industry-wide sustainable practices, there's no limit on, on, on what they could do. We're somewhere that's just ripe for improvement. Look, I think there's two for me. One would be housing and one would be transport. You know, if you think of the, the sort of basic building blocks of what people need, the moment there is there is such a variety of sustainability standards within construction, uh, and also within transportation. You know, so there's you know we have to be thinking of again about the collective, the population growth that we're experiencing in the mega cities. How do we live in these environments where we can be thinking about those standards, where it's not great to have a few five star, beautiful you know kind of eco buildings if you're surrounded by a whole lot that are not or environments that are not healthy. And so I think we, we probably need to get much better at building standards and accessibility and affordability of housing that actually enables people to live in more sustainable ways and perhaps have a smaller footprint, but actually have better quality, better quality of air and, and warmth uh, and temperature control, but also food production. Give me an example of the role of technology in helping you and your for now live, work, play, more sustainably at that that interpersonal level? I think it, the very simplest thing, if you think about your smartphone, what we can now know, you know, so it is really a, a data caption capture device. I mean, I can I can think about 
energy in terms of personal energy. I can think about what I eat, how much I, activity I put out. I can think about what I'm watching, what information is available to me, you know, which, which sources of information, what research do I get, how do I capture it? You've got all these kept great data capture with cameras and video and and you know the ability to capture information. So in the very simplest form, in a hand in, in, within our hands today, we have the ability to change our behavior and actually understand it on a personal level. Your passion is evident, Francis Valentine. You could clearly talk all day about this, but we don't have all day. You've got to go and run a couple of labs. I've got to keep finishing reading your CV, so I'll let you go now, okay? <laughs> New Zealand Woman of Influence, next New Zealand Woman of the Year, 50 so Tech Educators. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for your so time. Much. Okay, thank you. Bye.